What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. And then all of a sudden I had somebody that was offering to come and help me with a class. And that, um, that's really appreciated when you're not 100% sure how to deliver things. When I walked into the job, um, I hadn't participated in any formal maths uh, since I left school, and that was 30, 40 years ago. So, yes, it's helped me as well. Now I know much more. <laughs> I know about conduits and I know about um, transmission and how the electricity gets to your home. And I, I believe it's a reciprocal arrangement. I give them all the respect that they need and deserve. They're there doing their job. They do it extremely well and I'm there to do my bit. It is so crucial that the LLN teacher has um, the respect of the trades teacher um, and that they like me, respect them and their learning, that they do know what they're talking about, they know their stuff. You might need to tailor it a, a bit more towards the trade that you're working with or the group that you're working with, but um, there is there's definitely time um, involved in planning, like any teaching though, so no more than, in, than any other teaching. When we first kicked this program off, the maths teacher was there but had no idea on the relevance of the maths in our trade. So we had to sit down with them and give them text and give them examples of how we use that maths, which then makes their job easy. They could then target key areas. Basically, we'll have a look at the unit of competency, see what needs to be delivered, and then we'll work out a strategy of how we're going to deliver it, when it's going to be delivered, how it's going to be delivered. So we've got a map, we've got a plan there. We sat down and we said, what's in the new syllabus? what skills do they need to know and we sort of looked at what they needed to do for their final assessment and then I'd say right and then I sort of designed what I thought were mathematical skills that they needed to get there. We talked about what we'd start with the session, um, what we'd use for the questions, how we'd present it, who would say what, who would introduce it, what would we start with the modelling, would he answer the questions or would I answer the questions, so that we had in the back of our mind a format, but we do tend to ad-lib a little bit within the framework. We don't get together very often, but when we do, uh, to organise a class, we do sort of say, well, OK, we need to watch this person because his numeracy or literacy isn't as great as somebody else's. But also allowing them to, um, to give them food. We also try and work together that if they say to me, oh, so-and-so, he's not very good at that. If I notice that, then I can give a little bit of encouragement as well. And I'll sit down, have morning tea with the teachers and just say, what exactly did you want to do next week? Um, how do you want it done? Sometimes if I don't get a chance to talk to them in class, if you know if it's really busy and something happens or they've got meetings to go to, I'll go back and send an email. Sometimes they'll just send me an email back, oh, we're doing this and I know exactly what that means. So if it was uh, working out concrete slabs, volume of a concrete slab, I'd say this is what I need to do. We'll be working on slabs or we might be doing slabs with an integrated footing. And then Raguna would say to me, how do you want to explain that to them? And we'd look at, well, OK, this is the way we might do it. I remember having, uh, when we moved into the second year workbook with Steve, I remember having quite a few discussions because Steve would start talking to me and, you know, and then sometimes it was one word and sometimes it was another word and I'd go, hang on, you can't just keep interchanging these words, the students are going to get confused. And he'd go, but we use both. And I'd say, well, let's try not using it. And then somewhere along the track, we had to go and use this other word. And I went, I see what you're saying. And in the end, I said, let's put in a glossary. And we just um, put in what all the different words are that mean the same thing. Um, so, yeah, that was good. One of the things we did very early in the, in, in the piece was we would debrief nearly after every lesson. Again, it was the, the developmental phase of it to make sure that we were uh, covering what needed to be covering and to bounce ideas off each other. What I observed in the class and what the other teacher observed in the class to make sure we were capturing most of our learners. Our debrief was the planning session for the next week. We'd talk about what happened to this lesson and that would decide what was happening next lesson. There was no real let's sit down and spend ages going over what we did it's just they were looking like they were bored because we were taking too long on it let's move on 
generally if the group is going really well there's not really much to worry about but quite often if it's a class we're a bit worried about or a few students the teacher will step out with me at the end of the lesson um, especially if they're continuing on with the class and he'll just talk to me and say look I'm really worried about such and such. You're really helping students do what they need to do. They really want to get a job in a particular trade and you can go in there with the other teacher and really help them develop the skills that they need. You see what you're doing is worthwhile. So we all win. <laughs>